Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of the Going to Podcast. And today, I'm very excited to have my good buddy on, John Broughton. Good to be here. What's up, John? How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm excited for this podcast. All right, so for the listeners that don't know who you are, John, give them a quick breakdown on what you do in terms of your life right now and uh, a little background on yourself. Um, So, long-time wrestler. Mm -hmm. Um, Wrestled at uh, Whitewater. Uh, UW Whitewater, and uh, then got injured, and um, my whole life's been wrestling. So I was like, uh, "Where do I put in all my energy?" Yeah. Um, and I put it into. I always been doing videos since I was in seventh grade, but I um, I started really chasing um, video making and and creating video and editing video, and basically now I run my own video production company, um, and I do work for. Um, a bunch of different wrestling brands across companies. Tra- yeah, track wrestling, uh, go earn it. Um, I just did a gig for Army West Point wrestling in Midlands, um, and so it's Team USA. Um, just getting the work, and I'm still in college. I'm still only 22, but I'm uh, just trying to take it in stride and get as much out of it as possible. Um, and then on Instagram. Uh, is my personal you brought it on and then I also have my other page wrestling jokes and uh, so I'm known for that a little bit um, in the wrestling world and that's been uh, good for <laughs> finding clients and advertising and stuff like that yeah so. so John thanks for being on the podcast today mm-hmm. um, I know we did a little podcast a couple of months back almost a year ago now mm-hmm. or maybe half a year ago at least yeah uh, spring. we did a podcast at uh, one of the high schools and we were, you were filming a wrestling clinic with Bryce Meredith and uh, Seth Gross and we recorded maybe like 10 minutes but I wanted to actually have you come in and tell your story a little bit more in depth so uh, for starters I want to ask um, What's uh, 2018 been like for you in terms of just your your uh, your journey in filming, like the, the video production from where you started till now? It's like night and day. So, mm-hmm. how's it been this last year for you? In recap, I would say um, so. A lot has gone in. This is this is going to be my tenth year making videos. Yeah. Um, so it's not like it just happened overnight. Right. But I'd say that this year was the year that I exploded. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the year that everything just fell into place. Mm-hmm. And if you met me last year, you would be like, "Whoa!" Yeah. You know, it just came. It just came into fruition finally. Um, so it's it's been crazy. It's been a lot of travel, um, a lot of um, really cool experiences, meeting a lot of uh, a lot of my idols. You know, in the wrestling world and 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 otherwise. And just kind of exploding and, and working really, really hard, trying to keep my head on on the right mentality. You know, um, as soon as I feel like, as soon as I get like a big head, then I mess up. Mm-hmm. So trying to stay level headed through it. In check. Yeah, trying to not look back, but trying to you know make keep, sh- moving, keep, keep moving, moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. So in terms of uh, if listeners right now that don't know exactly, like okay, you own a video production company. Could you like? Uh, Go in more te- detail about like mm-hmm. exactly what you're doing, what what type of video you're filming, and how you're presenting it, and right. whatnot. So um, mostly, um, mostly social media. Okay. Videos. I mean, obviously, that's kind of like the today's genre of of videos. Yeah, sure. Um, YouTube, Instagram, right? Facebook. Absolutely. So creating something for my clients that gets people's attention and um, my bread and butter is sports highlight videos. Yep. Um, so the world championships this year, um, if anybody saw the track wrestling uh, highlight of our world championships. Awesome video. Awesome. I loved it. Um, and uh, super proud of that one. But also just any any kind of tournament that is live sports action making Sports look like a movie is mm-hmm. kind of my goal. Um, so a lot goes into that, you know, behind the camera and editing and, and making sure everything's perfect. Yeah. And a lot of, like, little tiny things that you wouldn't really think about um, that all, if you do all of them, um, I mean, it takes a really long time, but the end product, it looks, 
really clean. Now, in sense of uh, to get a feel for like the the type of hours you're putting in, mm -hmm. just for like one one video, mm -hmm. what would be like the average amount of time that it takes for one one video that might be like a minute clip? Um, for one minute, it de it depends. I'd say definitely, but um, for like a long tournament highlight, I'd say I'm spending on the editing a full day or two half days, you know, of work. Yeah. So um, we're looking at, I mean, eight, ten hours of just editing. Straight editing. Just editing, yeah. So that doesn't, I mean, shooting obviously is however long the event is, um, but then you got to go through all the clips and they're like, I have, I do it in like four rounds of editing. So like the first round is getting all the clips and then I, you know, just get the best ones, and then I lay down the music track, and the music track's kind of like the roadmap. Yeah, that's so like the foundation. Right, so then you can see all the spikes, and then you go, okay, at every one of these spikes of, of sound, something has to happen. Right. So then the goal is to make it look like a movie, but also like almost like they're dancing, like they're perfect. It's like a music video. Yeah, it's like a music video. It's like they're perfectly blended to the music. Right. So every little throw, if there's like a long sound, that's got to be accounted for and it's got a flow so getting it to that point if i just want to throw it together it wouldn't take me that long but if i want to get it to the point where it's like perfectly in tune and in sync and every little thing in the video is on beat it takes takes time so and that's not to uh account for the time it takes for you to actually film it too because you're right. spending uh probably a day or two just taking just taking all the film mm -hmm. and doing all the shots and uh, game planning basically how that layout's going to be for all the editing you have to Ab complete absolutely and um so i have two checklists now so these uh these checklists are kind of my cheat sheet my notes so yeah. i've got a bunch of uh i've got like a whole page worth of little camera tricks so you know if it's anything from looking up at a subject getting a different angle from like a bird's eye view or an you know an ant view um to different things of like remembering to put subject things in front of the subject so i can mask out and transition and and just a whole list of if i were to just go through and check off everything on the list and do those shots no matter what it would look good yeah you know i could film this soda on the table and it would end up looking at least halfway like decent. Like a movie. <laughs> right, at least halfway decent. And um, so I got to just kind of keep in my, when I had all of those thoughts kind of in my head, mm -hmm. it was kind of scrambled, but now that I have it on a list, and I think actually our video was the first one that I, I did that list, that's the list I still have. Yeah. So um, from that list, I've, I've added onto it. Right. But, um, but that's like, that. The list is when I go into a shoot, I'm like even write a couple things on my wrist, you know, to remember of like, okay, I need to remember to do this and that. And, and I thought that would look good. So I need to make sure to do that. And, uh, and then when I'm flying the drone, that's the time I got like 15 minutes. So I yeah. got to get, I get the most out of that 15 minutes of straight in, straight back. And if I were to speed manipulate this and, and I think the advantage I have is I edit it and I shoot it. So I know what I'm going to do with it while I'm shooting. I know what mm. I'm going to edit it as later. Right, I get what you mean. Yeah, so I can kind of think that way and I can kind of see the end product while I'm doing the first step. Right. And that's important because if you just feel like you're going to make up for it later, you can you can make it look okay, but making it look great, it's a... Uh, takes a lot of preparation. Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of the... The prep, prep work you're doing and whatnot and uh, the equipment you're dealing with now, where did uh, the experience – or I'm sorry, the education come from? So tell, tell the listeners about <laughs> like, your background and, you know, basically how you've uh, grown as your uh, skill set. Absolutely. So um, it, get, it started off as practice. You know, learning from my own mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, middle school, high school, all I did learn from my own mistakes, and I've kind of, I kind of did things a little unorthodox because I taught myself how to do right. most of that. And then when I got to college, I was like, all right, I need to learn more about this stuff. It was YouTube tutorials, um, and then when I got to a certain point of of kind of everything that you've seen on TV, movies, internet, it's all been edited by somebody. Mm -hmm. So when you once you think that like everything was created by somebody just like me um then you kind of watch movies and you kind of dissect oh that was a focus poll and then it was a 
you know, camera move right, camera tilt up, and you kind of dissect, okay, this, they did this, 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 and they shot the close up with a 70 millimeter and they shot the wide angle with a 24 millimeter and you kind of see everything. So now it like when I watch movies, I kind of almost like I'm still learning. Um, the education came from pretty much YouTube, pretty much mm-hmm. YouTube tutorials um, and then just self-taught, learning from my own mistakes, experience. Um, Cause I feel like there were a lot of things I knew, but I wasn't, and I could do them, but they didn't look as natural and as good as they do now because I didn't know how to do them correctly. I didn't have as, as much practice doing them. So practice makes perfect, I guess. And just again and again and again, if you do something 10,000 times, you're going to get pretty good at it. So what's the what's one of the most difficult parts about what you do in terms of the editing? Um, at this point... Like, is there anything that you like dread doing during the whole process where it's like, I can't, I I don't want to do this, but here we go. Um, Masking is a little tedious. You have to go frame by frame. So if something comes in front of the camera, like a flagpole or something, and you have to cut out frame by frame um, on the backside and make it look natural, that part's a little tedious. Um, It takes a long time. Because I've played around with trying to mask mask stuff. Right. And it's just like, oh, it's not like you could just draw a line and it's going to drag it for you. you got to go through every frame Uh and make sure that whole scene is covered. So that, I'd say, is tedious. But even with that, I kind of learned that as soon as the subject gets to about halfway through the screen, if you make it speed it up so the second half it goes faster Mm. so like the second half is at like 200 speed right or 170 whatever it is then you can cut you can funny i know what you're talking about yeah i've played with uh, adobe premiere pro now and right like you can save yourself a couple frames yeah so it's a little less it's like learning how to do a little less work and make it look like you didn't do the less work right yeah making it it is sometimes it even looks better because it's like all right we're on to the new thing and the transition just looks so nothing too difficult, just more or less just the tedious long hours of having to do yeah. each thing right. Yeah, that's that's hard. Is um, when I like, I feel like I'm getting a little burnt out on a video. I just go back to the beginning and watch what I have so far. Right. And then I'm like, dang, it's looking really good, but I need this next thing. Right. So what <laughs> the I'd say the hardest part is actually like putting it down. Sometimes stop messing with it. I'm like. It's like 1 a.m. and I'm like, I really got to go to bed because yeah. I got to be up early tomorrow. Um, so like, finding a stopping place, mm. that's kind of tough. Pacing yourself. Yeah, and just I get to a point where I'm like, oh, I've been at this computer for so long, and that's a good time to just go and work out and then clear my head and then right. come back with a fresh set of eyes. And um, and then sometimes I I edit it too quickly and I'm like, I'm done with it. And uh, if I'd taken my time and gone through the editing checklist kind of thing and really like being creative with each new edit then um then it would have looked a lot better so sometimes i edit it too fast and i'm like Mm. i gotta bring back and go through everything again and say okay can i redo this edit in a better way um but those are yeah those are the probably the toughest parts and then in terms of like the the fun parts like what do you look for to most in the process um I'd say speed manipulating it to like um, fit right on the beat. Mm. So like the beginning is in slow motion, then it's fast and then slow, or it's fast, then slow, then fast, or some combination of those. And basically um, I edit it in Final Cut Pro, so it makes it really easy to kind of shift around where the um, beginning and end of that slow motion is to make it look just perfect, to make Mm. it look like that it was made for that song which is what you want. You want it to like, you want it to be like an experience for their ears because they're hearing the song, but also an experience for their eyes where like everything like, it's like a music video. Yeah. Everything's on beat. You know, everything's perfectly blended. So, so uh, for the, for the, like I said, the year of 2018 seems like a great year for you. Mm-hmm. What were uh, some of the highlights? Like some of the experiences that uh, primarily relate to, you know, your filming, go, you know, what, what would you say some of the highlights were? Because, I mean, you've been to a lot of places this last year, like myself, and mm-hmm. so uh, let's hear about them. I would say um, highlights would be meeting a lot of guys on Team USA, um, meeting just 
big name wrestlers like mm. when we met Bryce Meredith and Seth, Seth Gross, Gross that yeah. was awesome um, and then since then I've you know run into Bryce a couple of different places and then um, he's my boy and then Bo Nickel run into him a bunch of places mm. he's my boy <laughs> David Taylor Kyle Snyder um, uh, Jaden Cox Kyle Dake just like meeting these guys the who's who of wrestling right yeah now. yeah and um, and hanging out with them like the, the whole world team was in the warm-up area and watching other matches on TV, and I'm just the video guy, but I got to, you know... Hang out with hang them. Hang out that, with them and watch the videos. I'm like, this is this is really cool, and this isn't, you know, something that I should just take for granted because it's like... They went to a lot of work to get there, like a ton of work. Right. You know, that's been their life to get to that point. You're just enjoying your hobby. And I'm enjoying, yeah. And so, I mean, enjoying that, I'd say the travel has been awesome. Um yeah, some of the countries. Let's let's listen to uh, some of the countries you've been to the last so, year. So yeah, I've been to Brazil and I've been to Bru- uh, Budapest. Those are the two countries. And then in the U.S., New York, L.A., Utah, um, Iowa, Ohio, Wisconsin, Illinois, St. Louis. So um, uh, yeah, the, the travel has been awesome. I've been to New York a couple times now, and um, and then the other countries is is crazy because. Um, I just it, it, it's something it's something like I I went on those planes kind of the the Brazil one I went alone, and so when I was going there I was like man like this is this is like I'm on my own adventure kind of thing right which was really cool and then um, and on the, a lot of the trips have been it's just been me um, on the plane uh, the track guys went with me to uh, Budapest and that was awesome because it was still like I'm I'm on my adventure but you know it's. Uh, I'm with like a team, a right. squad, so that's that's cool too. Um, but like, uh, yeah, the travel is it's um it's like really it's like a really good feeling to know that like your parents didn't pay for the plane ticket, you know, it's like you what you did, you earned it, earned the plane ticket, absolutely. And it's like it's m- it's a much different feeling. And when you arrive there and everything's different, you're like, I don't know how else to put it. It's like you're on an adventure, you know, and. Um, and I got I got that feeling from wrestling sometimes when we go to like national tournaments and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'm like yeah, like I got here, um, but this is different, whole different level. Yeah, it's been awesome. So uh, yeah, to talk about a little bit more about Budapest, I got one of your videos up. Yeah, and I wanted to kind of break it down, so if we can watch it real quick. Yeah, I believe this is drone shots. So first shot, pull out. Second one, rotation as I'm going up, and then rotation and pulling back and then this one I'm coming down and tilting the camera up so how long did it take you to do a lot of these drone shots this uh was two flights it took me like I had like a day to myself to go do all this stuff and people were cool with it like in terms of yeah yeah yeah, I mean I think I got yelled at for one of the shots in the arena um they're like no we're not flying drones in here and I'm like I'm so sorry (laughs) <laughs> but <it's, laughs> God, I gotta do what I gotta yeah. do. <laughs> but like this one, so they they're all just like shots that I had previously like thought about, like right. the roundabout. I knew there were gonna be roundabouts in Budapest. Excellent. So going with, at like the same pace as the cars as I twist the drone, mm-hmm. and then going up, it just created this really cool effect. Where like, yeah, I thought that looked real cool. Yeah, the cars are like not moving, but everything else. Everything is. is. Yeah. Like and, Inception style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? And then that beginning shot with the uh, um, building, the drones moving back, but in the editing studio, I'm zooming Looks like in. you're coming into it, but it's like. Yeah, phew. it like stretches the. Yeah, it's wild what you can manipulate in terms of like uh, filming. Oh, yeah. You know, because I, I realize the work you're doing now, it's not like. It, yeah, it's about angles and whatnot, but what you can do in the background of the f- the mm-hmm. focus of the person, but what what you see in the background, it's like you know either some yeah. the crowds falling back or coming forward. Yeah, that stretch effect is is really cool. So that's one of the things on the list is like I need to incorporate that because it's always like something where it's like, oh, you know that that looks really cool. Now, do you ever feel like uh, sometimes you put too much, uh, like? all these effects that you've learned, mm-hmm. do you feel like uh, sometimes you try to squeeze all of them into the video and it kind of yeah. takes away from a, l- a uh, little the video? Bit. Yeah, I feel like that sometimes um, like the, the content is kind of king. You gotta like, if there's a good clip but you didn't really 
capture it perfectly, sometimes you got to put that that clip in because that's what everybody wants to see. Right. Um, other times you feel really bad. I feel like I missed um, missed a play or something like that. Like I feel like. It, it like hurts because I'm like, oh, that would have been so cool to put in the video. Yeah, you weren't you in Brazil and oh, I forgot what was that. Oh yeah, what's that kid's name? Um, that stud. Yeah, the kid from Canada. Yeah, got that huge throw, and I was like, you could see yeah. me on the. the you, you see your reaction because <laughs> it looks like you're mad, or you're, yeah, you, you look like you react like, oh, that was a dope throw. But it was really. But me. it was really you missing the shot. Yeah, because the camera like turned on like right as the very end of the throw, and I didn't get the whole thing. Uh. As, I mean, it, that stuff happens. I mean, if you you can get ninety nine percent, ninety eight percent of what you shoot, great. It's not but, make or break. But sometimes you miss that stuff, and you're like, man, that would have been. Has that, that been happened to you more often, uh, especially with all the filming you're doing nowadays? Yeah, like that was like, ah, oh, I wish I would have done that. Or that's no. the one that sticks out. It's funny you bring that up because that one like sticks out in my head. Yeah. It's like that would have been so cool. Um, but I would, I mean. The Brazil video came out sweet, yeah, for regardless. Sure. Um, but if it was something like that was like in, in a big time match at a big time point, and that was at the World Championships, then I'd feel much differently. Mm. You know what I mean? It's almost like all right, it's a tournament. It's it's an important tournament, Pan Ams. But is it the World Finals? Did I miss it there at the right at the biggest time? No. So kind of lucky that it happened at that point. Um, but it's it's nervous and and uh, and sometimes people are trying to talk to you like while you're working and you're like dude, I'm on. Okay, I need my focus. I on this. I need yeah. And mm-hmm. it's almost the point where I can't watch. I have to watch the whatever's happening through the screen. I can't watch it with my eyes because then I might miss the shot. Yeah. So when you're filming, I notice that, and I wanted to ask you that on the podcast. Uh, when you have your um, what's it called? Gimbal. Yeah. The yeah the gimbal, mm-hmm. um, I know there's like a Ronin. What's it called? The Ronin. Ronin. Yeah, the yeah, Ronin. Ronin. When I see you with the Ronin, mm-hmm. um, I, I notice that now you're focused on the camera mm-hmm. instead of looking out. Right. Is that something you've uh, kind of always done, or is it a little bit? Yeah, I've got gone more to done it more. It's like sometimes I would just hold it and yeah. watch the match. Yeah, because sure I've seen right you just thing. hold it and like you're paying attention to the camera, but for the most part, you're just looking. Right. But now I always see you like maneuvering and uh-huh. your, your eyes are always on the screen of the camera. That's come from me just trying to hold myself to feel like you do all these improvements, right? And then you're like, all right, what's the next improvement? And you're like, all right, well, next improvement is this needs to be framed just a little bit better. And to frame it just a little bit better, I got to zoom in more. And I gotta keep my eye on the the screen the whole time. Mm-hmm. So um, that's come from just the beginning. It was like, yeah, just go right. You're right. And now it's more calculated and specific because um, you know every video is me trying to get one percent better. Mm-hmm. You know, at um, and making videos. So that one percent. Sometimes when you don't know what to do with that one percent, it makes you just work really, really hard at everything you're already doing. And then you end up getting that one percent from just being on top of your game. Um, so that's, I mean, that's where that comes from, I guess. So um, for John Broughton of 2019, mm-hmm. what's what's a, what's the outlook? What what's the goal? What's ultimately what you want to get accomplished in this year? Um, do everything I did this year, um, and then but better, but better, and then just try and take it. Get new clients, trying to take it like the next level in a couple of different things. So I want to continue to work for track um, and continue to film wrestling, but I also want to find um, another, I don't say another market, but another like avenue, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I want to keep doing wrestling stuff, but I also want to, maybe I want to tackle some football stuff. No um, pun intended. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> tackle some football <laughs> And, um, yeah, just kind of get into another, um, whether it's fitness and weightlifting, those type of videos, work for a supplement company or something like that, or a pro, pro sports team. Um, I got, I got some, some big goals this next year. I want to, um, 2020, my goal is to film the Olympics. Um, and that's then, a big goal. That's a big goal. Um, but working, working hard towards it and, um. And then, like I said, pro pro sports team would be, I think be really cool. Um, I just gotta figure out if I can still freelance or if they're gonna want me to 
do full full contract style. Right. So I mean, it, either way, it's it, it's a goal and it'd be awesome. Um, I just got to get keep working, make sure everything's you know looking good and, and on point, and then trying to get better. I feel like I've hit not a wall, but a, I've hit a little bit of a plateau, like where my work was just improving, 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 and now it's kind of not. Not that it's not improving, it's just that it's it's harder to come by, it's harder to find tutorials for what I need at this point. Mm. You know, some people, that you watch a tutorial and you'll be like, yeah, I, well, I, I've seen I know this. all the basics, I need known, the, yeah. the more in-depth right. talk. And so finding stuff like that is is harder to, to come by. Um, I really like watching Marvel movies because they've oh. got a really high budget. We can go on all day. About <laughs> my brothers love Marvel. Right. I love watching superhero movies. It's And they yeah, they just they look amazing. And they 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 have the highest budget for those movies. You know, so like Avengers comes out and it's like every camera movement is perfect. They've got the best crew for the, you know, everything. Um or I just saw Creed 2 oh. and everything on that was just good. Just perfect. Pretty you know? good movie. Yeah, it was a good movie. I, I liked heard it. mixed reviews about it. I think it's it's it's, it's like Rocky Eight, so you kind of got to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. That you're like, all right, I've, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, they they did a good job with it. Yeah. Um. I I, I really liked it. Yeah. So, uh, the uh, the wrestling. Yeah, I talked to Mike Mal about this mm-hmm. about the landscape of social media mm-hmm. and how. You know, everybody has access now mm-hmm. to not only content, but uh, learning tools, you know, in terms of breakdowns, technique videos, etc. Right. Um, how has it been for you? Because you started, you know, some little Instagram page that, mm-hmm. you know, would have never, <laughs> never thought anything of it, you know, mm-hmm. just simply for a, a gag and, you know, to bring out some content. How, how do you, how, how have you seen it in terms of your your aspect of just some whiz kid that, you know, uh, started this little Instagram page called Wrestling Jokes, and now it's like it's become a mind of its own. It seems like. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I don't even do it justice anymore. I I don't put the time into it that, um, and it still grows because it's just huge. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Um, but I I can't. The thing with this is like I never worked too hard on it. I always like just let my, I don't know, like <laughs> twisted sense of humor, like little personality come out and, hey, this is funny, like <laughs> going to practice after a bad day, watching your, yeah, watching <laughs> your <laughs> wrestler's lead disappear. <laughs> I mean, it's never something that I've been like, um, if I work too hard at it, then the jokes kind of aren't funny. Take away from themselves. I got to let them like come to me. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I'll see a picture and I'm like, how do I think about wrestling, yeah. you know? Or sometimes I'll see a wrestling picture and I'll think, can I apply this to regular life? Uh, so it's like you're keeping it related to wrestling in some way. But uh, um, it's it's weird because the um, I would say being famous on social media is a little overvalued. Okay. Um, well, what do you mean by that? I'd say that... You can sell advertisements, but you still have to work really, really hard at at growing your audience, and um, and you don't get paid like what people really think you get paid. Like um, like Instagram sponsors and right like people think that if people you, that are if, promoting a product on an Instagram, like, right? They think they're making stupid money, but it's right. It's really minimal the compared, compared to, to like the big A-listers that are getting paid for, like The Rock, right. to po- pay for an Instagram post or mm-hmm. a social media post from him. And if you've got millions, right. then it's, it's we're easy. different. We're talking 85000 It's like, how much do you pay for it? It's like, not what you were... Yeah. No, you and there's no, there's no standard. There's no threshold as to what, you know, what will get you this amount of followers it's what if you post it. Yeah. So my my account's super targeted because yeah. it's all wrestlers. Right. So you'd think it's it's a little bit higher, but I mean ads are. They I, I mean I make good money off of it, right. but it's not anything to live off of. Right. And right. This started as just like uh, it, just funny, a funny thing, and then it just you got, had no intent of right. It just got too big for me to like not work on it mm-hmm. kind of thing. So that was that was. <laughs> 
And then I just obviously have fun with it. Like, this is just my friend's tweet. You know, it's not even, it's not like, I didn't even come up with it. <laughs> yeah. And um, so it, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun, though. And, and I get to connect with um, with people that I wouldn't really think about. Like, John Jones follows this page. Oh, no way. Yeah, so I have That's so cool. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I have an open DM to John Jones. So he... Left me on red. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, that means something though. I bet yeah. you that 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 was pretty exciting to just yeah see like oh see people that you look up to or follow or yeah. like watching and, and they, they follow. follow you. So it's it's kind of kind of weird, but um, it, it's it's been awesome. The uh, it's also really good for you know some of these. I get to post my videos on here and I get eighty five thousand wrestlers to see my videos. Right. So that just helps with me. And your personal brand's growing. Personal too, brand, you know? Yeah. Which I'm I mean and and I don't try to over overstep like people watch it for the memes. Right. So right. I don't try to overstep my saturate it with all your content so right. But like there like, are little things like Oh yeah. Like just boosting my personal brand here and there and uh and it works I mean it works. Right. You know and and you can't like choke people with it because you gotta get social media is all about not posting what you want people to see, or it's what all about posting what they want to see. Right. So they want to see wrestling memes. So you got to give them a certain amount of wrestling memes before you give them something that they don't know they want yet, like a video. They're like, oh, well, that's not why I follow this page, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, I know. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. You know, just like sometimes when I'm posting for Go Earn It or uh-huh. myself, like you can definitely tell, like, oh, okay, these these followers like this type of, mm-hmm. this style of post mm-hmm. more than just this video or that video. Right. And, I mean, you get it because you've done awesome with the Go Earn It page. And the Go Earn Thank It page you. is, I mean, from, like, when we first met each other, it was. Yeah, we, were, we weren't that big. But now it's, like, huge. Like, I see and Go it, Earn It, it we're, everywhere. We're growing in terms of, like, you know, social media and whatnot. Mm-hmm. S- slowly, but we're getting there. But in terms of when I go to events now, oh, yeah. and I'm at, like, different states, mm-hmm. and I see people wearing our gear, that's, like, it gets me hyped, man, because it's, like, okay, I didn't sell you that when I was here, so you clearly got that from another tournament I was at, or mm-hmm. uh, you bought you bought it online, right. which is everything, man. And I was at I was in Midlands, and there was, first of, first of all, there was a wrestler in, a, like, not a team made, but like a go earn it single. Yeah. Like it just said go earn it on it. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's sweet. I feel like when I first started working for go earn it, go earn it was my first client. Yeah. And when I first started working for go earn it, I was like, anytime I saw someone in go earn it gear, I would like feel like I had to go up to them and be like, hey, go earn it, right? Yeah. Do you know why? I'm I know who you, you are, kind right. of thing. But now it's like, Oh, that kid's wearing Go Earn It hoodie. That's kids wearing Go Earn Yeah, man. Someplace. Yesterday I was at a tournament. It's like you, all over. You tournament over a thousand kids, and mm-hmm. I'd say probably two, three hundred of those kids, if not more, all had Go Earn It uh, singlets on. Mm-hmm. You know, team singlets, uh, custom singlets. Mm-hmm. You know, and that that means everything. That's like a huge. Uh, huge compliment on our brand mm-hmm. you know like it's not about me or it's not about just our following it's about like the impact we're making and so right when we see the kids wearing our gear it's like it, it gets gets very cool to see see people care mm-hmm. you know yeah and then there's there's also like there's a message behind the brand you know right. it's not just it's not just another clothing brand that's yeah. like we make cool clothing it's there's like a message behind it yeah it's just, which is cool to see. Yeah, we definitely, I've learned over the last year, you know, if you try to express the brand in just the words, go earn it, mm-hmm. you know, they're going to be like, oh, I don't really care for it. But mm-hmm. if you try to express it in a way where, or like you, hey, what are you doing right now to get better? You got to go earn it. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's where I'm at now, you mm-hmm. know. So, um, John, what uh, what's it like, you know, being in your position now where you're you're almost done with college and basically you have the opportunity to do whatever you want at this point because you know after college is over with you've already found your hobby that you've made it a career Mm -hmm. what what's uh what's the next step for for yourself in terms of taking it another level um well i think so i worked worked really hard to get to this point and i think that I've got a lot of hard work ahead of me, don't get me wrong. But right. I think the hardest part is getting to the point where your hobby, your passion is your best option. 
Mm. You know what I mean? Like if we talk about sophomore year me, my best option was not making videos as a career. It was an office job, right? That would have paid better. But now it's like, why would I get an office job? I'm not going to make as much. I'm not going to be as happy. Right. The best option for me is to chase my passion. Mm. And I mean, at some point, at, at, it's, it's always been that way. But now it's like... You see it. You can actually do it. Everybody sees it. There's no like, my parents aren't fighting me on it. There's no, no one's like... And then they You got work. the green light. But I got the green light from everybody. Right. You know, there's no second thought. This is it. This is the lane. And so getting to that point where it's like, my my problems are getting further down this lane. Mm. That's, I feel like getting to that lane is the hardest part. So it's just continuing to do what I do to the best of my ability and finding more people who want this. With now, it's social media. Everybody wants this. Mm-hmm. It's, it's video. Like the pictures, you post a picture, it's like, cool. If you post a video that's like well-crafted and looks like my best work. It explodes. It does. It does really well for the brand. It does really well for whatever you're trying to sell. Right. And um, and I've been really lucky that I've got a lot of like really exciting clients. You know, it's not it's not boring stuff. Like it's, re- it's really fun. Yeah. And um, so finding more work that I want to do, not work that I have to do. I'd say that's kind of the next step. And then continuing to to improve and find new ways to to push myself and and set setting high goals that. I can't reach. You know, if I set goals that I can't reach, I'll do way more to get there than I would if I had attainable goals. Mm. You know, so you say filming the Olympics is a tough goal. It's like, well, what happens when I do it? And then, then what? You know what I mean? Then what's the next step? Right. So I got to get, I got to keep my head on straight of high goals working towards achieving those high goals. Yeah, it's like for me when I record podcasts, you know, I would have never thought uh, from a year and a half ago until now. You know, the amount of people that I've talked to mm-hmm. and the uh, athletes, the public public figures, the motivational speakers, the, the actors, the people that I've talked to on this podcast, it's like every time I hit a certain goal where I'm like, all right, I want to get this person on. All right, I just had him on. What's next? Mm-hmm. Like you you get so hyped about the goal, mm-hmm. but it's it's really like you should just get hyped about every, all, everything. Yeah. Like don't 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 just set it to one thing. Just set it to all right. From here on out, I'm gonna enjoy everything that goes into this. Right, and I think uh, I think the standards we set for ourselves, like so many times, um, you always talking like, oh, this is a nice whatever, and they're like, oh, this is nice, but it's gonna be even nicer. You know, the people that are like, oh, it's gonna be even better, like a month from now. Just wait. Those type of people have the next goal in mind. Yeah, they're right. like, forget about this. You know, so like, for instance, I was filming with um, a T7i, Canon T7i, 2.8, um, 24 to 70 lens. Talking real nerd right now. Good gear. <laughs> <laughs> and a Ronin. Like, yeah, good gear. But I was like, I just wait. Just wait till I get the 1DX, the, you know, the real, yeah. real nice camera. So that was kind of like me being like, just wait, just wait. And then I'm, I kind of, I just got this camera, saved up for it for a while. And now I'm going to shoot a couple of videos on it. And then I'm going to be like, all right, what's the next thing I need to yeah. do? And then people are going to be like, this looks so good. I'm like, just wait. You know, hmm. I'm also going to get to that point. Um, like you were just talking about with the, you know. The studio. The yeah. studio. Like, yeah. I mean, it looks awesome to Thank me because it's Thank my you. first time here. Right. right. But to you, you're like. Oh, yeah. This is just. I've I, got the I, next step. I, I'm yeah, just getting started. <laughs> this is this is little stuff. you know. Right. But it, it's just evolution. It's not mm-hmm. even like little stuff. It's just like. I like how it is now, but obviously it's going to get better. Right. You know? Yeah. And the, uh, the, the I think we, uh, I don't know, people people like us, because I know you're, you're built pretty similarly to the way I am. For is, sure. Is we look at, like, we got our eyes on that goal, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes we forget to enjoy, like, the journey. Like, I, I, I always, know. I'm trying to take conscious steps now. Like, when I was going on the, fl- like, flight to Brazil, I was like, I'm being flown out of the country. Yeah. I gotta enjoy this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, not a dime spent by you. Every you know, second's gotta be. Yeah. Every every second's gotta be like seriously enjoyed, and um, and I was down there and I was like, I gotta take full advantage of this, but I gotta also like take seconds to enjoy. Yeah, I'm like I'm awesome like that in both facets where 
like this weekend I'm going to Denver, Colorado. Mm -hmm. So I got a couple events out there. I got a grappling industries event and I got a a youth wrestling tournament out there. And some part of me is like, all right, you got to drive 14 hours there. You got to set up, get your your hotels, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But then the other aspect, I'm like, dude, I get to go to Colorado for the weekend and Mm -hmm. do what I like to do. Right. You know, so yeah, the driving and stuff sucks. And it's it's hard to look at it for what it is because you got to do it all. But right. when you look back, you're like, oh, dude, this is pretty 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 awesome. Yeah, and you get another sticker on that map. Well, I yeah. guess you you've been to Colorado. Yeah, it'll be three times now this or this calendar year per se. That's but, awesome. Yeah, we're getting we're getting closer and closer. It's all fifty. Mm-hmm. There are quite a few more stickers up there since I last saw oh, it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're about to knock out. About to put five more stickers on before uh, February, so it's gonna get nuts. That's awesome. Yeah. So since we've spoken, we went from having like probably two to five sales reps to fifteen to twenty sales reps. Wow. That are traveling, and some of these reps are not even in our state of Illinois. They're mm-hmm. in Cal. Like we got Lee Kemp out in California. Mm-hmm. He's doing his thing with he, your. He moved there. Yeah. Toy. Yeah. His son wrestles at Fresno State, but mm-hmm. uh, for the time being, he works events. Uh, with go earn it Mm -hmm. and uh, all that and then we're getting reps out in the east coast and so it's growing man yeah you know that's awesome so john uh where can we find you on social media this is your time to give your plugs um any information you want to talk about real quick or um, stuff that you want to highlight Mm -hmm. that are coming up for you this is this is that time um i uh january is good for me i'm i'm doing a um, project with USA Wrestling and the Sweet. Marines, um, kind of a little documentary on some high school kids, um, their experience wrestling, and and basically the the point is to see that being in the Marines is is a lot like being a wrestler. Sure. Um, so a project with those two, really excited. Um, I get to put those two on, you know, my future resume of mm. hey, I've worked with USA Wrestling, I've worked with the Marines. Um, so that's really cool. You're um, right. On social media, you can find me at uh, u underscore brought it on. Um, that's my Instagram handle, and I my also my Twitter. Um, Just pull it up for everybody. Uh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. So u underscore brought period it period on, and uh, and then I post. Post my videos on there. Still post, you know, pictures of me and my life. You got a YouTube too. page too, right? I don't actually. Just oh no, you. It got taken down. Oh wow. Because in middle school, I was kind of a bandit with copyright. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I so didn't know that. So yeah. I didn't know. You can't stop the podcast now. You got to talk about this. All right. So I didn't know copyright rules then, like I do now. <laughs> And I was just a dumb kid just creating, like, no, I'm going to use this song. Like, what's the problem? Um, but now I use – now I'm fully copyright-free and, sure. and stuff like that. But I did a bunch of damage to myself. Uh, so I'm bummer. in the process of either recovering that page or starting a new one. That's will be figured out by the end of the month. I did, I say do both. Like, yeah. Recover the page, keep it for your personal, and then, or if you can recover it, mm-hmm. and start a new one. Yeah, and that's John Broad, and I think it's just my name. Cool. Uh, for the YouTube channel, if I can get it back. Um, yeah. All right, John. So you you already know what I'm going to ask you. So let's <laughs> cut it, cut it to the chase. Uh, when somebody says John Broughton, you have to go earn it. What does it mean to you? Um, I think I'd say life is kind of an individual sport. And um, I'm really big about taking everything in my life and saying I'm accountable for it. Um, extreme ownership is what's called, and, and basically anything you let into your life, you're responsible for. So your success, your failure, it's all on you, and you can't look to be blaming the things around you or your situation for what you're not able to do. Um, and the positive of that is anything you achieve something. Anytime you achieve something. That's you doing that 100%. Right. So I'd say go earn it. It's like you got to work for it if you want it. And if you want it, you only got you know one choice is to go earn it. Sweet deal. John, thank you for your time, buddy. I appreciate this. This has been awesome. Um, for listeners out there, uh, this month only, podcast 2019 saves you 20% off at goearnit.com. Thank you guys for listening. Have a good day.